Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing integrin cell adhesion molecules. Okay, so we've seen two examples of integrins now. Uh, we've seen LFA1, which stands for Lymphocyte Function Associated Antigen 1, and VLA4, which stands for Valate Antigen 4. Okay, uh, we're now going to see some more examples which aren't involved in uh, the uh, immune response, uh, but are involved in uh, con connecting uh, cells to the extracellular matrix. Okay, so let me just remind you of what we said earlier. So, if this is a cell here, then basically you can have integrin proteins that are within the membrane of the cell. So here is an integrin protein. And remember, this will consist of a heterodimer, where you have an alpha subunit and a beta subunit. Okay, and there are 18 possible alpha subunits and 8 possible beta subunits and then uh, they're going to link to either collagen so some are going to link directly to collagen or some will link to fibronectin so there's two uh, options either it can link directly to collagen so let's let this green fiber be a collagen fiber okay so this is collagen Okay, so let me give you some examples of some uh, integrins uh, which bind to collagen, okay? So one is the alpha-1, beta-1 uh, integrin, okay? So you put the alpha-1 subunit as your alpha subunit, and you choose the beta-1 subunit as your beta subunit, and that's an integrin that's capable of binding directly to collagen. Another example is alpha-2, beta-1. So, uh, again, you just change the alpha subunit to the alpha 2 subunit, leave the beta subunit as the beta 1 subunit, and again, you get an integrin which is capable of binding to collagen. Alternatively, there are other integrins which don't bind directly to collagen. Instead, they're going to have a little protein dimer in between them, okay? And this protein dimer is known as fibronectin, okay? So here is our fibronectin protein dimer here. And fibronectin is the uh, word used to describe the dimer of two fibronectin proteins. Okay, so this is fibronectin. So, uh, let's colour in fibronectin in purple here. And it connects to the collagen and it also connects to the integrin here, which is in blue. Okay, so I will highlight the integrin in blue. Right, so which integrins, what examples of integrins uh, uh, bind to fibronectin in this way? Well, there is the alpha-5, beta-1 integrin, and there is also uh, a, an integrin known as the alpha-V, beta-3 integrin. So we use the alpha-V um, alpha subunit, okay, and the beta-3 beta subunit. Okay, so those are two, well, four examples of integrins which can link to the extracellular matrix, and these sort of connections are involved in holding a cell at its um, site, basically, and stopping it moving. So it keeps it nice and held uh, to the extracellular matrix. In addition, um, these integrins actually have all sorts of signaling pathways which occur within the cell, and these basically um, tell the cell, well, they manage the cell's um, cell cycling, basically. So they are very involved in controlling when the cell uh, goes into the cell cycle. Okay, right. So now let's have a look at integrins which can attach uh, cells to basement membranes. Okay, so firstly let me talk about what a basement membrane is. So wherever you have an epithelium in biology, so for instance, all of the endothelia um, in blood vessels, they count as an epithelium. They're a very special type of epithelium known as endothelium, but we'll still count those as an epithelium, okay? All of those have these squamous cells, and basically you can ask what actually makes the endothelial cells stay uh, in their position, basically, because they line the blood vessel. Why don't they just drop off into the blood vessel? Well, basically it's because they're connected to a, a basement membrane underneath. So here in turquoise, this will represent the basement membrane. In addition, 
if we think about uh, the epithelial cells which line the respiratory tracts or which line the digestive tract or which line the urogenital tract or which are on the skin for instance these are again all attached to a basement membrane so basement membranes are these structures on which epithelial cells sit basically and they're attached to the basement membrane so we now want to look at how what actually attaches this cell to the basement membrane and integrins are involved in attaching uh, the epithelial cell onto the basement membrane so let's have a look at the structure of this basement membrane in a bit more detail